it's time for Orchard CMS. So what is Orchard Core and what can this modular framework do for you? Today, we'll explore the Orchard Core project and investigate its capabilities. So welcome back to Orchard CMS. So let's get started. What is Orchard Core? Before we talk about Orchard Core in general, let's first explore the direction Microsoft has taken in technology. Back in 1997, Sun Microsystems sued Microsoft, charging them with trying to steal Sun's Java standard by shipping a conflicting version of the programming language. Back at that time, even though Java was supposed to be open source, Microsoft had a competing product named Visual J++, which was extremely popular. In the meantime, during the lengthy lawsuit, Microsoft decided to create its very own managed platform and language. With the help of Anders Holzberg, the original author of Turbo Pascal, and the chief architect of Delphi, Turbo Pascal for Windows, with databases, they created the c -sharp programming language along with the .NET framework. Miguel de Casa had a job interview at Microsoft in 1997, shortly before he started the GNOME project. At Microsoft, he met Nat Fredman, who worked there as an intern. Afterward, they became good friends. In April 1999, Fredman came up with the idea to create a company to work on GNOME. The company was founded in October 19, 1999 as International GNOME Support, but its name was changed to Helix Code later. Because the name could not be trademarked, the name was changed to Zimmerin on January 10th, 2001. In December of 2000, the underlying common language infrastructure was published as an open standard, ECMA 335, opening up the potential for independent implementations such as the Mono Project, .NET for Linux, founded by Miguel de Casa. The Mono Project was without controversy within the open source community, as it implements portions of the .NET framework that were covered by Microsoft patents. Simeon was acquired by Novell on August 4, 2003, to improve its offering of Linux for the enterprise. The terms of the all-cash transaction were not disclosed. In 2002, Microsoft eventually paid Sun $20 million and was permanently prohibited from using Java compatible trademarks on their products. Java had a major impact in C Sharp. Without Java, there would be no libraries such as Enant, Enunit, CruiseControl.net, Log4Net, and Hibernate, and Lucene.net. These popular Java projects were ported to C Sharp. With Microsoft being investigated by the Department of Justice, Microsoft was not favorably looked upon by developers. Developers in the 90s never forgot the horror story of how a big, mean monopolist set out to destroy Netscape with its unfair marketing practices. Microsoft dominated the browser wars. In April 2002, IE was at 90%. In September of 2008, Chrome was introduced with just 1%, but in July 2012, Chrome dominated the browser wars at 27%, i.e. at 24%, and Firefox at 19%. Today, Chrome is at 65%, Safari at 16%, Firefox at 5%, i.e. at 3%, and Microsoft Edge at 2%. In 2007, Google released the Android platform, announcing they would use Java for its application development. In 2010, Oracle acquires Java by buying Sun Microsystem for $7.48 billion and files a lawsuit against Google for its use of Java in Android. On November 22, 2010, Attachmate buys Novell for $2.2 billion. Novell also announced that it was entering into an agreement to sell some of its intellectual properties to CPTN Holdings, run by Microsoft. Miguel de Casa and Nat Friedman were let go. On May 16th, 2011, Miguel de Casa announced on his blog that Mono would be developed and supported by Xamarin, a newly formed company that planned to release a new suite of mobile products. After Xamarin was announced, the future of the project was questioned, since Mono Touch and Mono for Android would now be in direct competition with the existing commercial offerings owned by Attachmate. It was not known at the time how Xamarin would prove that they had not illegally used 
technologies previously developed when they were employed by Novell for the same work. In July 2011, however, Novell, now a subsidiary of Attachmate, and Xamarin announced that Novell had granted a perpetual license to Xamarin for Mono, Mono Touch, and Mono for Android. Xamarin took official stewardship of the project. On March 27, 2014, Satya Nadella made his first public appearance as CEO of Microsoft. For one thing, Microsoft just had paid $7.2 billion to acquire Nokia's mobile business, a deal Nadella had voted against as a member of the senior leadership team because, as he explained, I don't get why the world needs another ecosystem of phones. The Windows phone has a mere 4% market share, sipping off leftovers from Apple and Google. Sacha was quick to yield the axe. 12,500 Nokia staffers were given their papers on July 2014. Sacha focused the company on the cloud. Microsoft may not have a phone platform, but that doesn't mean they can't build the best mobile applications. Microsoft released versions of its signature software suite, Microsoft Office, for both iOS and Android for free. On November 12, 2011, Microsoft announced .NET Core, a cross-platform for .NET. The open source development model would be managed under the stewardship of the .NET Foundation. On February 24, 2016, Microsoft acquires Xamarin. With this acquisition, the entire c .NET ecosystem is consolidated under one corporation. Microsoft can now concentrate on taking .NET to the next level. This set of technology is ubiquitous. The consolidated .NET platform now supports iOS, Android, Linux, macOS, Xbox, and Windows. With the acquisition of GitHub, it reflects desire by Microsoft to reconnect with developers and persuade them that, hey, the beast of Redmond is not quite so beastly these days. It loves Linux. It contributes code to the kernel. It loves open source, and it loves putting open source projects on GitHub. Microsoft is committed to cross-platform development. So why go through all this historical exercise? Which is better? Java or C Sharp? To answer this question, it's really about what the developer is familiar with. Developers stick to the tools they know. I'll tell you this. I have developed with both Java and C Sharp for many years. I feel that I am more productive with C Sharp and .NET. Microsoft makes some of the best development tools in the industry. Java being open source is controlled by the Java community process. It's really Oracle that owns and controls this committee. Whereas C Sharp and .NET are ECMA standards, ECMA 334, ECMA 335 respectively. ECMA is an international standards organization. C Sharp and .NET are controlled by that committee. Microsoft just has one vote in that committee. One other major consideration is that Microsoft has never sued any company for using .NET or C Sharp. Unfortunately, Oracle can't say the same. So how does it fit into all of this? Well, as we look back at Microsoft's history and its technology, let's look back at the history of Orchard CMS. Microsoft first released the open source content management system called Oxide at the 2008 Mix conference. Mix was a Microsoft conference held annually for web developers and designers at which Microsoft showcased upcoming web technologies. They had big plans for Oxite. They even contracted Miguel de Casa, as we know, at the time was working for Novell, to port the Oxide code base to Linux. Microsoft made the source code available for the first open source Oxide CMS at the end of 2008. According to Mary Jo Foley, a tech journalist from ZDNet, all about Microsoft, Microsoft's open source CMS platform Oxide was reborn to the Orchard Project at TechEd Europe in November 2009. In the beginning, the intent for Orchard is threefold. Individual .NET-based applications that appeal to end users, scripters, and develop a set of reused components that make it easy to build such applications, a brilliant community to help define these applications and extensions. Orchard CMS 0.1 features content parts and types from code, pages, blogs, 
comments, navigational menu, only one level, themes, user and roles, permissions, akismet, spam protection. In release version 0.05, they added modules, data migration, the gallery, multi-tenancy, search, command line, and Azure functionality. And here we can see the front page of the Orchard Gallery. On version 0.8, the Orchard project team added shapes, placements, razor, functionality, widgets, notifications, and the theme machine and pagination. On 1.1, they redesigned the add recipes, import export, media picker, warm up for performance, and shape tracing. On version 1.3, RSS everywhere, preview, markdown, rules, forms, and tokens. They added fields, auto route, and projections. And then 1.5, they added admin placement, CAPTCHA, items permission, hierarchical navigation, admin search, custom forms, and content picker. On version 1.6, they added web API, MySQL, and DB cache. On version 1.7, they added workflow, best media image editor, taxonomy, output cache, facet search, threaded comments, C-sharp scripting, multiple search engines, projections with raw and shapes, module-wise recipes, media gallery field, shape menu items, and new token syntax. Here's an ad of the Orchard Media Manager. And in version 1.9, they added the audit trail module, draftable widgets, indexable drafts, dynamic layout module, dynamic forms module, integrated Owen middleware support, Azure Redis cache support, RTL support and admin, cultural selector, message bus, and search widgets. And the current release, which is version 1.10, parameterized snippets, editor tab support, configurable snippets, custom Lucene analyzer selection, new workflow activity to remove a role, strict transport security option for SSL, content picker localization, filter widgets by culture, and added support for Postgres. So finally, let's talk about Orchard Core. Orchard Core consists of two different targets. Orchard Core Framework, an application framework for building modular multi-tenant applications on ASP.NET Core. Orchard Core CMS, a web content management system built on top of the Orchard Core Framework. It's important to note the difference between the framework and the CMS. Some developers who want to develop SaaS applications will only be interested in the modular framework. Others who want to build administratable websites will focus on the CMS and build modules to enhance their sites or the whole ecosystem. Orchard Core CMS is a complete rewrite of Orchard CMS on ASP.NET Core. It's not just a port. We want to improve the performance drastically and align as close as possible to the development models of ASP.NET Core. Performance. This might be the most obvious change when you start using Orchard Core CMS. It's extremely fast for a CMS. So fast, we haven't even cared about working on the output cache module. To give you an idea, without caching, Orchard Core CMS is about 20 times faster than the previous version. Portable. You can now develop and deploy Orchard Core CMS on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. We also have Docker images ready for use. Document database abstraction. Orchard Core CMS still requires a relational database and is compatible with SQL Server, MySQL, Postgres SQL, and SQLite. But it's now using a document abstraction, yes SQL, that provides a document-based API to store and query documents. This is a much better approach for CMS systems and helps performance significantly. Nougat packages. Modules and themes are now shared as Nougat packages. Creating a new website with Orchard Core CMS is actually as simple as referencing a single meta package from the Nougat gallery. It also means that updating to a newer version only involves updating the version number of this package. Live preview. When editing a content item, you can now see live how it will look like on your site, even before saving your content. 
also works for templates, where you can browse any page to inspect the impact of a change on templates as you type liquid templates support. Editors can easily change the HTML templates with the liquid template language. It was chosen as it's both very well documented and secure. Custom query. We wanted to provide a way for developers to act as simply as possible. We created a module that lets you create custom ad hoc SQL and Lacene queries that can be reused to display custom content or expose as API endpoints. You can use it to create efficient queries or expose your data to SPA applications. Deployment plans are scripts that can contain content and metadata to build a website. You can now include binary files and even use them to deploy your sites remotely to staging to a production environment, for instance. They can also be part of a NuGet package, allowing you to ship predefined websites. Scalability. Because Orchard Core is a multi-tenant system, you can host as many websites as you want with a single deployment. A typical cloud machine can then host thousands of sites in parallel with database content, themes, and user isolation. Workflows. Create content-approved workflows. React to webhooks. Take action when forms are submitted and any other process you'd like to implement with a user-friendly UI. GraphQL. We provide a very flexible GraphQL API such that any authorized external application can reuse your content, like SPA application or static site generators. Orchard CMS supports multiple deployment strategies. A full CMS. In this mode, the website uses a theme and template to render your content, aiming for little or no custom development at all. Decoupled CMS. This site starts off blank. Apart from the content management backend, you create all the templates you need with Razor Pages or MVC actions and access your content via the content services. Headless CMS. This site only manages the content, and you create a separate application that will fetch the managed content using GraphQL or REST APIs. Orchard Core currently supports setup, multi-tenancy, theming with shapes, document database with migrations, declarative dependency injection, navigation API, event bus, authentication and authorization, content items API, content parts and content fields, content type module, managing content types and settings, list modules, modules, support, deferred tasks, resource manager, placement files, background tasks, and recipes. It also supports auto root tokens, deployment, import slash export, tenant management, modules management, indexing search, missing settings, home page, settings, live preview, body editors, markdown editor, menu, collapsible admin menu, RSS API, XML RPC, meta web blog API, scripting, JavaScript, widgets, flows, layers, projections, media library, media processing, liquid templates, queries with Lacene and SQL, Razor Pages, .NET Standard 2.0, View Locations, PO Files, Pluralization, the Agency Theme, and Docker Images. It also supports Workflows, Forms, Email, Password Resets, Social Logins, Azure Blog Storage, Updated Default Recipes and Themes with Bootstrap 4, Data Protection, and Fragment Caching. It also supports Background Task Management, GraphQL, decoupled CMS, taxonomies, custom navigation, Microsoft account, Google, Twitter, Facebook authentication, reCAPTCHA, mini profiler, recipe migrations, file-based content definition, the coming soon theme, and edit and display modes. It also supports content localization, RTL admin theme, resource CDN, media CDN support, GitHub authentication, Facebook applications, .NET Core 3.0 and 3.1, localization, NuGet packages, Azure Media resizing, SQL fields indexing, and finally, full text aspects. So these are the features Orchard Core. To summarize, 
we explore the direction Microsoft has taken in technology and how the industry has changed over the years. Microsoft is bracing open source and cross-platform development. We have seen the .NET framework transform from a proprietary closed framework to a framework that is open source and cross-platform. We explored the history of Java and C Sharp. We spotlighted the events and showed the direction of C Sharp and the .NET platform over the years. We explored the initial releases of Orchard CMS and highlighted its features over the different versions. Finally, we explored the latest release of Orchard CMS and highlighted the features in Orchard Core. Orchard Core consists of two different targets. Orchard Core Framework, an application framework for building modular multi-tenant applications on ASP.NET Core, and Orchard Core CMS, a web content management system built on top of the Orchard Core modular framework. It's important to note the differences between the framework and the CMS. Some developers who want to develop SaaS applications will only be interested in the modular framework. Others who build administratable websites will focus on the CMS and build modules to enhance their sites or the whole ecosystem. If you like this video, please click on the thumbs up icon. Also, please subscribe and click on the bell icon to get a notification when I release the next video. Thank you for watching.